Hi guys, I'm Arnell, and today we're looking at 13 money phrasal verbs. These are the 13 phrasal verbs we're going to look at. I know it looks like a lot of information, but by the end of this video, you are going to know how to use all of these. So let's start with the first one, put down. You know what? Let's start big. Let's start expensive. Here's a house and here's a car. The house costs $200,000 and the car costs $15,000. I want to buy the house. I want to buy the car. But I don't have $200,000. I don't have $15,000. But I can, I can put down a $10,000 deposit on the house. I can put down a $3,000 deposit on the car. Put down means to pay a part of the total and you will continue to pay the rest over time. We normally use put down with the word deposit. That's very natural. We put down money, we put down a deposit on something big like a house or a car something you can't pay for now. I put down a $3,000 deposit. I put a $3,000 deposit down. Both are fine. Finally, finally, I finally paid off my house. It took me about 15 years. It took me 12 months to pay off my car. Pay off means to finally complete a payment. Now the house is 100% mine. No more payments. The car is 100% mine. I don't need to pay anything else. I am still paying off my student loan. I am still paying my student loan off both are fine. Remember how about a minute ago I said, I can put down a $10,000 deposit on the house. I actually wasn't being very honest. To be honest, I didn't even have $10,000. I couldn't put down a $10,000 deposit. My parents chipped in. To chip in means different people, they want to help you buy something, so they all pay a little part. Eric works in an office. Next Friday is his birthday. Everyone in the office knows that he needs a new bike. So everyone chipped in to buy him a new bike. Carl chipped in. Amy chipped in. Sakwat chipped in. Isabella chipped in. Everyone chipped in and bought him a bike. Have you ever chipped in to buy someone a present? Let me know in the comments. So Eric is very lucky. He has some great colleagues. They all chipped in to buy him a bike. No one ever bought me a bike. Let's get back to my house. So my parents chipped in so I could put down a deposit to buy a house. I promised that I would pay them back. When you pay someone back, you return the money they gave you. Normally, when we use the phrasal verb pay back, we put the person in the middle. When are you going to pay me back? She said she wouldn't pay us back. I'll pay you back tomorrow. Of course, you could put the object after the phrasal verb. I promised that I would pay back my parents. That's also okay. Let's keep going. 
Okay, I have two bank accounts. I have a checking account and I have a savings account. The money in my checking account can be used every day. I can pay my rent, I can pay for my groceries, coffees, normal things. The money in my savings account is not for spending. It's for saving. Saving for something important like a hospital bill or, or a vacation. When we add money to our savings account, we are saving up. We use save up when we save money for something specific, something we want or need. I'm saving up for a new washing machine. I'm saving up to buy a new washing machine. Save up for plus noun. Save up to plus verb. <sighs> Unfortunately, this month was very expensive. I already paid my rent. I already paid my bills. I already paid for everything. But my laptop broke. My laptop broke and I had to buy a new one. I had to dip into my savings. First, what is the verb dip? We see it here, dip. It's such a small word. It's kind of cute, dip. Dip, dip, dip. Dip means to make a small movement into something. For example, you can dip a cookie in milk. You can dip your toe in a bath to see if the water is hot. Dip into means we need to use money from our savings account, but we don't really want to. Nobody wants to dip into their savings, but sometimes it's necessary. My husband and I had to dip into our emergency fund because a storm damaged part of our roof. So now you can see, I don't have any money in my checking account. I barely have any money in my savings account. You know what I need to do? I need to cut back. I normally spend $25 a month on coffees. I need to cut back. I normally spend $75 on takeout. I need to cut back. Cut back means to reduce. We can say, I need to cut back, period. Or I need to cut back on something. We should cut back on our spending. The company stopped offering free lunches because they wanted to cut back on costs to reduce the amount we spend, to reduce the costs. Okay, how are you feeling so far? I have an important question for you. What's your favorite animal? I know what you're thinking. You're thinking about a squirrel. Squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Okay. Money phrasal verbs, squirrels, what? What do squirrels do? They collect things, right? They collect things. They collect things and they save them. So the phrasal verb is squirrel away. Squirrel away and save up can be synonymous. For example, I'm saving up for a vacation or I'm squirreling money away for a vacation. But when we use squirrel away, sometimes we mean we put money in a secret place. We're kind of hiding money. We're squirreling money away. I didn't know my ex-husband was squirreling money away in a Swiss bank account. You can squirrel money away or squirrel away money. Both are fine. There's been a lot of information so far. I think we need a break. Let's grab a coffee. Come on. Hi, could I have a decaf cappuccino to go, please? That'll be seven fifty, please. Seven 
$7.50 for a cappuccino. That's expensive. <laughs> That's a little bit too expensive. That's a ripoff. That's a ripoff. Yes, here I'm using ripoff as a noun. Don't worry, I will get to the phrasal verb. A ripoff is something that is too expensive for the quality or the service. Sellers might try to rip off tourists. Sellers might try to rip tourists off. Here, I'm telling you that sellers might, might make tourists pay more than necessary. Maybe rip them off. Does rip off mean expensive? Not quite. You know, if you go to an amazing restaurant and the food is great, this could be expensive, but it was good food, great service, it was worth it. That's not a ripoff. So, what happens if you need to pay for something, but you don't want to? I joined a yoga class. I paid for 10 classes. When I arrived for my first class, the yoga teacher told me I needed to buy a yoga mat. You need to buy a mat. What? I had to buy my own mat? I thought the teacher would provide the mats. I had to cough up 40 bucks. Bucks is an informal way to say dollars. The word cough is this. <coughs> so when we cough up money, we need to pay for something but we really don't want to. Kind of like coughing, we don't really want to cough. And listen to the pronunciation. We say cough, cough. I'm sure you have probably had to cough up money at some point in your life. Okay, good. Here we have a picture of this amazing food. I would love to go to a restaurant, but at the moment, I'm just scraping by. I'm going to put scrape by down there. I'll put rich at the top and poor at the bottom. So you can see if you're scraping by, you're not poor, but you only have money for the basics. You can pay your rent. You can pay for food. Maybe you can pay for your bus tickets. But there's this kind of negative feeling to it. You barely have enough. I work two different jobs just so I can scrape by. When I was a university student, I usually managed to scrape by, but sometimes my parents had to give me money. Get by. You can see get by and scrape by are very similar, but get by doesn't have that desperation to it. It's a little bit more neutral. I live in New York, and yes, it's expensive, but I'm getting by. Don't worry about me. I'm getting by. Oh my God. I'm rich now. My great aunt Ellen just died and she, she left me half a million dollars. I can quit my job. I can quit my job because I have come into money. When you come into money, it means someone has died, probably a relative, and they left you some money. When I was 25, I came into some money. My friends are really impressed that I own a house, but it was really easy for me to buy. So there you go. 13 phrasal verbs you can use to speak about money and spending and buying. I really hope this lesson was helpful. Please give me an example in the comments below using one of these, and I can't wait to see you soon. But don't forget to subscribe to my channel, turn on the notifications, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.